Why is it that so many modern buildings these days are so bloody ugly? Architecture is important. It can raise or it can lower the human spirit. Yet what we are surrounded by these days is ugliness on the landscape. I've been very interested for a very long time in the history of architecture in Western countries. And imagine my shock at what I found, which is that buildings are getting uglier and uglier and uglier by the day. But what I haven't looked at really is the science behind why it is that modern architecture is so ugly ugly and it's the science that's extremely important and therefore it's the science that I'm going to look at today. Hello, hello, hello and welcome to this edition of the Dolly Heretic. Um, that was my attempt at uh, Paul Joseph Watson uh, who has done some very interesting YouTube videos on why it is that modern architecture is increasingly ugly. Why is it in particular that there is a left-wing war on beauty? Why do the left insist on putting up so many buildings that are so bloody hideous? Now, he's done some very interesting videos on the politics of this, but what particularly fascinates me, of course, is the biology of it. What it says about human evolution, what it says about where we're going, that we are surrounded by so many ugly buildings, and why in particular post-1945 did we stop being interested in beauty and seeing buildings as a way of glorifying God, of, of, of reaching the transcendent, and instead um, decide to surround ourselves by absolute bloody hideousness. Now, a very interesting paper has come to my attention in this regard uh, by Diesner et al. called Trait Appreciation of Beauty, A Story of Love, Transcendence and Inquiry, which was published in the Review of General Psychology. Now, what this found was that the medial orbital frontal cortex, part of the brain, is implicated in beauty. So those who have, uh, who, have, who have strong connections in this part of the brain are more likely to appreciate beauty, are more likely to enjoy beauty, are more likely to want to you know, attract to beauty and whatever. And those who have uh, damage, essentially, to that part of the brain are more likely to basically like things that are ugly and hideous and unattractive. Now, that's quite interesting because, of course, as those of you that have watched this show will know, uh, that part of the brain is very close to another part of the brain called the posterior frontal cortex. And research has shown that when you stimulate the posterior frontal cortex with magnets, then what you find is that people are higher in both in positive and negative ethnocentrism. And also, that is to say, positive ethnocentrism, thinking that your group's the best, the in-group's the best, whatever, and negative ethnocentrism, that is fighting the out-group, um, and also higher in religiosity when that part of the brain is stimulated. Now, that's, of course, very interesting because under the harsh Darwinian conditions that were prevalent until about 200 years ago or so in the, at the height of the Industrial Revolution, we were under very, very strong selection um, and computer models have shown that the group which will dominate in group selection in battles with other groups is the group that is optimally high in positive and negative ethnocentrism. Um, and what's also been dominated the other groups, and what's also been shown is that religiousness is very strongly associated with positive and negative ethnocentrism, because what religiousness tends to do is it tends to get adaptive traits such as positive and negative ethnocentrism and make those traits into the will of God such that they are more likely to be followed. Religiousness is an evolutionary issue, as you may know. Religiousness is about is present in all cultures. Religiousness is a bit between 0.4 and 0.7 genetic. Religiousness is associated with not just positive and negative ethnocentrism, but also with fertility. It is associated with genetic physical health, it is associated with genetic mental health, it is associated with desire for children. <clears throat> it's been uh, adaptive and it's been selected for across time. And so as something that's adaptive, we would expect it to be correlated strongly with other things that are adaptive, and this would include positive and negative ethnocentrism, and this is indeed the case. And those who are uh, the opposite of this, those who are atheists, that is associated with markers of physical and mental mutation not having children, not wanting children, not being healthy and being maladaptive. So that's what, that's what that part of the brain is associated with, both positive and negative ethnocentrism and religiousness. Now then another very interesting paper uh, by Piep et al, Imbalance in Sub-Regional Connectivity of the Right Temporoparatial, um, um, I can't read it here, but anyway, uh, in, in Major Depression uh, in Human Brain Mapping, uh, 2016. Now, uh, this found something very interesting as well, which is that depression 
is the, the region of the brain which relates to being depressed, whether or not you are depressed, is, is again the medial orbital frontal cortex. Those that have a reduction in connectivity in that area of the brain are more likely to suffer from depression. Um, which is, of course, maladaptive. Depression is associated with suicide. It's associated with poor physical health. It's associated with poor mental health. It's associated with not having children, not passing on your genes, not wanting to have children. It's, it's a very, very negative, bad thing in evolutionary terms to suffer from depression. So the same area of the brain which influences, your influences you know, whether or not you have depression, um, this maladaptive thing, also influences the extent to which you appreciate beauty and influences the extent to which you are positively and negatively ethnocentric and the extent to which you are religious. One area or a group of areas in the brain are, are uh, related to all of these adaptive traits. Now, what do we know about left-wing people, about liberals, what we know about them is they are extremely high in depression. And many, many, many studies have shown this. It's a linear relationship. The more left wing you are, the more likely you are to have been diagnosed with depression. And particularly if you are a woman, <coughs> there is evidence that among those that will be categorized as being on the far left, among those who are under the age of about 30, more than half of them have been diagnosed with depression. Now, why is depression associated with being left wing, with being irreligious uh, um, uh, um, uh, and, and you know, being a, and desiring ugliness? Why would these things all go together? Well, we know that depression is associated with being left wing. What is depression? Um, a neuroticism, basically, um, mental instability, feeling negative feelings strongly. These would be negative feelings such as envy, such as guilt. Um, such as self-loathing, such as all of the things which you deal with by being left wing, by puffing yourself up and saying, oh, well, I'm more moral than thou. Um, and, and, and that's how I deal with the darkness and the, so the sense of nothingness and the sense of, 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 of lack of love and whatever at the heart of me, uh, that by, by being left wing. So you can see how it would work in that way. Uh, but more importantly, perhaps, it's, sim it's simply that uh, it's, it's individualism. People who are depressed are obsessed with themselves and how they feel and what their feelings are. And research by Jonathan Haidt and his colleagues has shown that um, leftist values are individualistic values. They're associated with concern for the individual, with harm avoidance uh, and with equality. And they're not concerned with, with, uh, with the group, with the good of the group. Uh, which is to uh, say things like uh, high levels of, um, of, of sanctity and hating disgust, uh, uh, high levels of, um, of, uh, of the importance of trust and, and, and community and, and whatever. These are these, these, these right wing uh, conservative values. So left wing people in general, by the way, are going to be quite low in disgust, which would explain why they uh, 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 have no problem with disgusting buildings. But, you, uh, but then why would this be associated with a lack of beauty? Why would, why would this be associated with not caring about beauty? Well, the only reason that one can think of is that it's simply an overall um, maladaptive set of traits at the group level. So religious um, ethnocentrism is good at the group level because the group that is high in positive and negative ethnocentrism is more likely to pass on its genes. Religiousness is good at the individual and also at the group level because if you are if you are high in religiousness, you are more likely to be high in positive and negative ethnocentrism. And also, it tends to promote healthy behaviours and whatever as the as the will of God. It tends to promote pro-social behaviour as the will of God. So those that are low in being pro-social are likely to be cast out and not passed on their genes. It tends to promote all that is adaptive as the will of God. So you can see how in prehistory and under selection, a religiousness and ethnocentrism would go together. So where where would beauty and a desire for beauty come into this? Well, really, in human, there's two dimensions to this. In human terms, first of all, beauty, it uh, tends to be a matter of health. Uh, we find people who are healthy, beautiful. What beauty is, um, in terms of males and females, uh, is a, a, a symmetrical face, which is low in mutational load. If it's lo if you're low in mutational load, then you you uh, you, you will subject to disease or whatever and you you have you fight off that disease because you're so healthy you're so genetically healthy and you end up being able to maintain a symmetrical phenotype and therefore that symmetrical phenotype is found beautiful 
because it shows that you are low mutational load. If you have high levels of mutational load, if you're genetically uh, maladaptive, high levels of mutational load, you will be using disproportionately more of your body's resources to fight off disease. So you'll be less able to maintain a, a symmetrical phenotype, and so you will be ugly, and therefore it makes sense to find you unattractive. Interestingly, it's been found that uh, there are weak associations, people that are conservative, people that are right-wing. There's studies that have found that they are Berggren et al. is one. Study, and you can also find these in my book, um, How to Judge People What They Look Like. People that are ugly tend to be um, less religious, and they tend to be more liberal than people who are good looking. And this makes sense because you would expect um, all of these um, healthy things to be associated. Both body and mind uh, would be healthy and they, and, they, and they would be associated. And this makes sense because, of course, as you well, I'm sure all know by now, the brain is 84% of the genome, which means it's a massive target for mutation. And this in turn means that if you have maladaptations of the body such that you are physically unattractive, you will sure as damn it have maladaptations of the mind. And indeed, research has shown a very interesting book by uh, Matthew Seraf and colleagues, uh, uh, Modernity and Cult Cultural Decline, um, has, uh, brings together a large body of evidence which shows that this is the case, that there are associations between you know, depression and other mental illnesses and physical mutation, and that they are increasing across time in line with a growing mutational load in the population. So all of this kind of makes sense and comes together. You can see why they would all be associated. So if you are, if you are attracted to ugliness, that is maladaptive because you are being attracted to genetic problems, to illness, to sickness. Um, you will be therefore less likely to pass on your genes if you are attracted to ugliness. And you would expect being attracted to ugliness to correlate with other maladaptive things, such as being low in positive and negative ethnocentrism, and therefore putting the good of other genetic groups over your own genetic group, um, or being low in religiousness, and therefore uh, indirectly uh, being low in ethnocentrism, and also believing the things that are associated with being low in religiousness, such as that life is pointless and there's no meaning to life and such, and, and that you should be selfish and all this sort of stuff. You know, the, the, the maladaptive. By the way, um, you will see my paper, The Mutant Says in His Heart There Is No God, where I show that being irreligious is associated with evidence of elevated mutational load. People that are irreligious are more likely to have autism, which is itself associated with high mutational load. Um, it's associated with an old father, which is a mark of mutational load because of mutation build up on the semen as a man gets older. Um, uh, being atheist is associated with left handedness. Left handedness is associated with an asymmetrical brain. Um, that's why, why people, people tend to be left handed. Um, and so uh, you, you know, it, it, it is, a, it is a, a, a matter of mutation. So, this desire for disgust, this being attracted to disgusting things, this liking, this being tolerant, of being surrounded by being uh, of disgusting things, we can expect expect it to be associated with low religiousness and low ethnocentrism, the same part of the brain, because all of these things are evidence of being maladaptive. So that's the, that's the, key, the key reason uh, why uh, the, the, you know, these, these things are associated, and left-wing people seem to like disgusting, revolting things, and seem to be tolerant of ugly architecture. Um, they are also, as we discussed earlier, individualists. Their research by Jonathan Haidt has found that you have these five moral foundations. You have uh, the, the binding values, the group level values, that is to say, uh, loyalty to the group, uh, and uh, being low in um, disgust uh, and liking structure and order. And you have the individual level values, well, that is to say that you are uh, concerned with harm avoidance and you are concerned with equality. Now, the, in the person who is left wing um, really is high in only those two values and has, is very low in the others. The person who is right wing um, is about equal in all of those different values. And so he is, again, more concerned with uh, the issues of disgust uh, and beauty. Now, the other reason why beauty is adaptive, as Paul Joseph Watson has noted, is that it does raise the spirit. We like what is beauty. Beauty inspires the group. Art, as is an example of beauty, inspires the group to be more religious, to be more religiously fervent, um, and therefore more ethnocentric, and therefore more likely to win the battle of group selection. Being surrounded by buildings, great cathedrals or whatever, that are to the glory of God, inspires the, the, uh, the pe people to greater levels of religiosity, to greater levels of group selection, to be more likely to dominate in evolutionary terms. Um, beauty, in that sense, is something which we, we like to be surrounded by. It makes us feel 
good. Uh, and for most people, particularly group selected people, which is what the majority of us was, were until quite recently, therefore we need to be surrounded by beauty. It's important to be surrounded by beauty. We are high in disgust. If you surround us by a lack of beauty, we will feel disgusted all the time. We will be in an evolutionary mismatch and this will cause us to do maladaptive bad things because we, we will go mad like, like our animals in a zoo or something like that. So, so therefore beauty, we can see how beauty is going to be associated with these other adaptive things. Now, what has changed? What has changed, as I've looked at a lot in this show, is the issue of the spiteful mutant. So until about 1800 and the Industrial Revolution, we were under these harsh levels of group selection. We were selected to be highly group selected. We were selected to be religious. We were selected to be ethnocentric. And we were selected to appreciate beauty. We were selected for these binding values. Now, what happened? Because those were the groups that dominated other groups, and those were the groups that survived. Now, what happened, of course, with the Industrial Revolution was that the, um, the introduction of better medicine, the introduction of uh, inoculations, the introduction of better living conditions and whatever, is that the harshness of Darwinian selection pressures and the harshness of group selection pressures collapsed. And we went from 50% child mortality in about 1800 to 1% child mortality today. Now, who are the people that would have, that would have been killed, that would have every generation been wiped out under this level of, of high child mortality. They would have been the physically sick, those that would have had high mutational load, causing them to die of childhood diseases and whatever. What would high mutational load of the body be associated with? High mutational load of the mind, obviously. And therefore, over time, you would have a buildup of people suffering from depression, suffering from schizophrenia, suffering from autism, suffering from all of these different kinds of illnesses, which be significantly genetic in origin and will be the product of mutation. Now, what would they be associated with, these illnesses? They would be associated with, uh, with two things. First of all, they would be associated with individualism, individualistic values, because that's what we'd be being selecting out. So you would get more and more people that were individualistic, that were deeply concerned about harm avoidance and deeply concerned about equality and not concerned about disgust and not concerned about group loyalty and not concerned about order and structure, but merely about power and whatever, you know, Machiavellians, narcissists, dark triad people. You get more and more nasty people like that that weren't group selected. But also you just get more and more people that were completely maladaptive, that had desires that would have been obviously damaging and selected out under harsh Darwinian conditions. These would include, and they would all be associated so that you would expect people that were individualists to be more likely to have these desires, and left wing to be more likely to have these desires, maladaptive desires, such as putting other ethnic groups over your own, such as putting other families over your own, such as putting other species over your own, such as believing that life was pointless and had no meaning, such as believing that you shouldn't have children or pass on your genes, such as believing that we people should engage in roles to which they are not adapted, such as pushing us towards an evolutionary mismatch, such as liking ugly things. And so you'd have all of this stuff and it would all come together because it would all be a product, it would all co-correlate, it would all be a product of high mutational load. These people have been, have been termed the spiteful mutants. Now, they would eventually influence other people in the society to behave in a maladaptive way, because we had to think in a maladaptive way, because we are evolved as a highly social species to be with other people that are genetically normal. Depression is an example of this. Yes, it's highly genetic, but it can spread. It can spread to other people uh, who are, are not genetically prone to depression if they are exposed to depressed people. And so more and more of us will be dragged to behave in a maladaptive way, you know, influenced to believe that it's good to have ugly buildings, influenced to believe that it's good to pull down beautiful old buildings, influenced to believe that buildings should be about function rather than about the greater glory of God and about inspiring the group, influenced to believe that there was no God and life was meaningless and whatever. And more and more of us will be dragged in the, by these spiteful mutants into their way of thinking. And eventually the spiteful mutants, these highly maladaptive people uh, with their maladaptive group destructive ideologies would reach a tipping point, which has probably happened at about the 40s, 50s, 60s, of about 20%. And once that happened, then um, people would, as has been shown from psychological experiments, once the minority is about 20%, then people start to move over towards what they see as the winning team. And then 
the religiousness and whatever that was formerly holding back this tsunami of mutation would take over. And that's what we see with the ugly architecture. We see this suddenly they take over and therefore it becomes cool, it becomes in, it becomes fashionable to build bloody ugly buildings. Now, how does this work at the group level to have ugly buildings everywhere? Well, First of all, it creates an evolutionary mismatch where lots and lots of people all the time are in this evolutionary mismatch and they are feeling a sense of disgust and horror and yuck all the time. And so this has the effect of, of destroying their self-esteem, of destroying their motivation, destroying their sense of importance, of destroying their desire to help the group, of just destroying their lives and just making them just unhappy, 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 depressed people who are less likely to behave in adaptive ways. That's the first thing it does. So it destroys the, the, the self-worth. It destroys the morale of the group. The second thing it does is it fails to push the group towards the transcendent. They're no longer surrounded by things which are there to push them in a direction of adaptive things, religiousness, God, the transcendent. Instead, it's to drag them down, to make them maladaptive, to make them atheistic, to make them think life is pointless. And therefore, they stop protecting their group because they don't think their group is of eternal importance anymore. And therefore, they permit in, you know, the, the group to be completely destroyed and overwhelmed. They stop protecting sacred values because what's the point? They stop protecting good and bad, right and wrong, because what's the point? Because they're just surrounded with this mismatch. They're surrounded by this horror. They're just ground down into the dirt and they're depressed and unhappy um, and nothing makes sense and they're like as I said they're like animals in a zoo and they're just what's the point anymore and what's the point of having children and then they look up and they just see hideousness it's like being in northern Finland you know let's get all the beautiful wooden buildings and burn them down Finns by the way shouldn't be allowed anywhere near fire they have the, they have the lowest level of pre-1975 buildings in Europe they shouldn't be allowed close to fire but anyway they, they, they uh, and, and they feel depressed and down what's the point of trying and it just brings in this general negative social epistasis where what's the point? And what this can be taken back to is the fact that we have a growing number of mutants in the population. And those mutants, they have brains which work differently. Brains which would have been a tiny minority among um, the pre-1800, the pre-industrial population. But now a growing number of them have these brains which work differently where the medial orbital frontal cortex, the posterior frontal cortex work differently due to mutation, resulting in them being low in religiousness, low in ethnocentrism and low in the appreciation of beauty. And so that is where ultimately the rise in hideousness um, would seem to come from. Now, it is true that being uh, left wing is associated with high openness, the psychological trait, and one of the correlates of openness is aestheticism. So it is true that left wing people can produce and be interested in beauty. But I would suggest that the nuance is that this is beauty at the individual level. They are interested in things like moral beauty. And what that really means is you know, you, 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 you fit with left wing moral rules. They are interested in certain kinds of art, which can sometimes be beautiful, although it's interesting that modern art is itself now ugly and it inspires nihilism. Um, but they can produce beauty, but often it's a beauty that is related to the individual and promoting individualism, not a beauty that is related to the group and promoting the good of the group. And that is where they are maladaptive. So they can do wonderful bits of art which inspire you to think that are beautiful in a way because they're aesthetically pleasing or whatever, but make you think that life is pointless and that you're just an individual struggling alone in a world dark with some meaningless. And so in a sense, it's a kind of maladaptive beauty to the extent that they produce it. But to, uh, as a, in general and overall, what you find is that they are attracted to and promote ugliness, whether it's in modern art, whether it's in architecture, whether it's in what they, the kind of people they want to have on television, uh, whether it's whatever it is, they are attracted to and promote ugliness. And that is what you would expect of maladaptive people who are high in mutational load. And as this research shows, they all intercorrelate in the brain. It's 
one part of the brain which is messed up in these people, which causes them to promote nihilism in terms of religiousness, destruction of the group, destruction of all adaptive things, and that includes the destruction of beautiful architecture. Well, I hope this has been of interest. If it has, you feel free to support the show, which you can do in the various ways which are seen below. If you have any ideas, this was commissioned by our squire, by the way, then please write in uh, and tell me about them. Uh, I live stream on Mondays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. UK time, uh, 2 p.m. in New York. And I will see you soon. And oh, do subscribe, by the way. And I will see you soon. And goodbye. <laughs>